game that's not a game, Dan. Oh. So I'm going to get you to hit a few shots, right? Yeah. And this is like a bit of education for you. Maybe. Love that, love going to school. Yeah, so you like these, don't you? Um, we're going to challenge ideas of strike. We're going to start challenging strike ideas. Lots of people might be kind of want to talk about misits and testing misits and those kind of things. We're going to start just kind of tinkering. So I'm going to, I want you to hit five draws, or as many as it takes, but around five shots we're trying to hit a good draw, like a, you know, a gameable draw. So a tee shot, you're not hooking it. Yeah. You're going to just try and draw it like five, ten yards. But I want you to tell me when you button one. And then we'll do the same with fades. And I want you to tell me when you button one. Yep. And then we'll look at if anything changes in the data reference strike. This should be fun. I've done this before, so some people will already know what's going on here. But there'll be plenty of the audience, because the audience moves and it's new and all those kind of things as well. We don't know what we're doing. Little game. Like a game, but it's kind of not a game. We should have got Matt. Yeah, so he really loves that game. <laughs> Right, so we've got quad at the ready, we've got Dan's gaming driver and we've got it dotted up on the face. Let's see draws. I mean, it doesn't matter how many you You can hit one if you tell me when. I just want to know when she's nailed it. Yep, nailing draw. It's drawing. Yeah, that's drawing. Maybe a bit pushy. Maybe. A bit pushy, maybe. Uh, spin axis was actually to the right. Was it so pushy? So you did a zero, it was straight for a slight push. What was the strike like? Don't look, what Don't was know. the feel? Um, I want you to tell me the feeling I reckon strike. that was pretty centre. No, so I want to know if it's, I just want good or bad. Um, it wasn't bad, it's not where I want it to be, but it I wasn't want, okay, bad, so bad. I want to know when you feel you've ripped it. I don't want okay. you to look, I just want you to think, I've hit that one, I've ripped it. Yep, I can do that. That's definitely drawing. Spin axis there I is. Turn that. It's coming in. I would say that Ten was, left. I would say that wasn't bad. I don't think that's quite my optimum. But a decent shot, but not the ripper. No. Okay, let's have a few more. Drawing. Straight, I would say. So I want you to get a little bit more drawing. You've got to go around the corner a bit more. Okay, you really Strike on that one. Yeah, that's a bit more than nearly it. That was we're, ripperish. We're, we're ripperishing, but we're not quite perfectly ripperishing. There you go. Drawing with rip. Rip draw. Rip draw. Yeah, left spin axis. Okay, let's have a couple more like that there. Nice drawy shots. Yeah, that was that's me ripperoon. So he's calling shot number six the ripperoonies. Drawing. Overturn that one. Still drawing? Yeah, I think that club face was too shut. So didn't strike? Probably a little bit too high because I feel like I've de-lofted it maybe. Okay. So it didn't feel rippy? No, it felt uncontrolling that's that feels like a low spinning uncontrollable one that's going to overturn yeah got ya ripped or not ripped ripped good okay now i want you to hit fades fades must start left cut back 10 yards okay so aiming left ball must start left we want fades now danny boy okay Struck well. Struck well for me. I don't know if that's coming back, is it? Yeah, it's trying to. Is that a ripper or not? For a fade, that's ripping. So still fading. Want to know if it's a good strike or not? No, that wasn't as good as the first one. I mean, I'm using a TS, so we all feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Oh, Absolutely lovely. TS3. Yeah, that's a good one. Is that a ripper again, is it? Yeah, felt rippery. Okay, so you've had two rips hitting that shot. I'm now going to do the same. All right, so I'm going to go for a draw. And again, I, I've done this before, so I'll only hit one. As soon as I rip it, I'll say if I've ripped it or not. That's drawing. 
that ripping. I wouldn't say it's a rip, yeah, I'd say that's good enough. That's good enough. Okay. That, that's going to show you what I think will happen, and I would say that's a good it. What's so interesting when it comes to calling strike is there's so many other things that cloud it. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Because obviously I look up and I can see what the shot's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trying to stay objective about strike sometimes is not that easy. But I'm going to use that as my one and I'm now going to fade one. Okay, rip fade. And I'll, again, I'll call you when I feel like I've got the, the shot I need. The strike. I'd say that pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. So what is interesting, right, if we look at your trying and hit draws, and you weren't that good at hitting draws at the start, okay, shot number six is the one you said you ripped. Okay, yeah. Shot number six, you were eight millimetres toe, ten millimetres high. And that was my rip. That's a rip draw. Face one close to a path. So you're saying your sweet spot is slightly high toe. That's where you said you ripped it, not yeah. the middle. Eight millimeters toe, 10 millimeters high. Yeah. Okay. If we go into your fade batch, well, what's interesting, if you look at your draw batch, they're all centered to slightly high toes. Yeah. And if we go into your, sorry, your draw batch, so if you look at your draw batch, if I say that again, look at your draw batch, they're all basically in that top right quadrant Top left as you look. Yeah. So high, higher up and high, toe high toe to centered. Okay. Okay. If we look at your fade batch, you get three. You started to go more centered and then one in the heel. Yeah. And if we go to the one that you said was your rip, you've got a ball speed of 153 compared to 154 with your draw. Okay. So you've got so the same ball speed. Yeah. Uh, you carried 245 compared to 263. So, so draw 20 two, yards, six, three. Yeah, and yeah, 20 yards less distance. Yeah. Both equivalent what you're calling just a rip. Yeah. Okay. Um, if we go into your club data here, actually, what's interesting with shot six is your six out to in where you're only where you're zero with your draw. Right. So you're in a power draw and you're in a weaker fade. Yeah. But anyway, both rips, as you call them, and that's two millimeters heel, five millimeters high. So hitting different shaped shots, you've called them both a rip, so in effect, the same spot from the club, people would think. Yeah. But that in, in just left to right heel and toes, you're two millimeters going to, it's your 10 millimeters from left to right, from toe to heel, you're moving strike. So interestingly, did I hit anything out the center of the bat? Well, no one hits the center, center. You've got no zero, zeros. You get close. And there, I didn't so call got, them rips. No, shot eight, you were three millimeters toe, one millimeter high. Yeah. That's pretty close That's to pretty center. center. Um, you generated 155 full speed, so your joint highest full speed, but you were 258 carry. So you actually lost distance there. You yeah. got more spin from there, so and you more, lost distance. More towards the center, and I still lost distance. Yes, the geometric center. Yeah. Wow. If we look at mine, so my draw strike carrying two five three is eight millimeters toe, four millimeters high. Yeah. Two into out, almost three into out with my club path. Yeah. The draw in it, and I called that a rip. Eight millimeters toe. Yeah. Okay. And then my fade shot, um, I called my, it's interesting, I called my last one there, the rip, um, which is shot 17. And it was 20 millimeters high, so it's quite high on the face, yeah. but it was center. So again, I'm moving my left to right. Eight, I'm eight millimeters, you were 10 millimeters. So we're both really, we're two millimeters out, we're the same. Yeah. From heel to toe, we're saying it's a centered hit. When we're hitting a draw, we're both going, we're finding the toe calling it a center. When we're in a fade, we're both going to a heel yeah. calling it a centered hit. So where, what is a centered hit? People don't 
obviously people are not well, obviously... The reality is that the, the centre of the club is moving, the sweet spot of the club is moving depending on what we're doing. 100%, it's a dynamic sweet spot. It yeah. not only goes from heel to toe, it goes from up to, from the top to the bottom. Yeah. If we just deal with the heel to toe to kick us off, um, let's use my iPad, describes it quite well. Okay. If you put a ball on the face, Dan, so the face is going to be, if you point to the face side. That's face. So we are hitting the ball with this iPad this way. Yep. Now this is a fictional center of gravity here, this T, because the center of gravity would be more here. Yep. And when we talk about it moving, it's moving tiny amounts. But we're going to put it back here just for the illustrational purposes. Now, if we take all club paths of zero, Okay. So all club paths are straight for this yep. analogy. So everything's moving dead down that line. Yep. Correct. Everything Perfect. is just travelling straight. The path of this iPad is travelling straight. Yep. So if the path of the iPad is straight and the face is at zero, straight like that, yep. the centre of gravity of that ball will it's line up with the direction of the centre of gravity yep. of that iPad. Okay. Even though we know that's not the centre of gravity, it's a fictional one, and we're just doing it for illustration periods. For a person just tapping in there on the keyboard, going, "That's not the centre of gravity of that iPad." Yeah. Oh, no, it's centre of gravity of that iPad. It's not there. <laughs> so what I want you to do, yeah. we know the path is zero. I want you to close the face to a path. Okay. Okay. So if that centre of gravity is travelling at zero path straight. We now have the face argument, say 10 closed. Yep. Where is the sweet spot on the face? If you get another T for us, the sweet spot on that face now Still is going to be way. correct. So there. Obviously, this is a, a gross generalization. It wouldn't move this much. But it's now more towards the toe. So you keep hitting geometric center with that ball. It will feel, when you're hitting your draw shots, exceedingly healy. Yes. And it will generally act a bit like a heel shot. Yeah even though you've hit the middle. Yeah. So you now you twist the iPad so it's open to a path. And then we know the path is zero. Yeah. Where's the, where's the uh, dynamic sweet spot now? So if you hit geometric middle of that iPad with the ball, which would be there, you're now gonna be hitting way out of the toe with the face open to a path, which is why you've gone more towards the heel and I've gone more towards the middle. We're trying to find. We're just moving. We're, just we're tracking it. Yeah, tracking it. You wouldn't have known you do that. I wouldn't call. I would never have called myself a tracker. <laughs> Every pro I've done this with, which is lots, they don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. My audience know. Anyone who's followed me for any time would have seen me done this video years ago. Testing for sweet spots is not about hitting on different parts of the face. You've got to then be able to control how open the face is uh, to the path or close to the path. You've then also got to measure, or you've got to be able to uh, control how you add loft or take loft off, because it's three dimensions. It's a bit harder to explain the other one. So if the club path is always zero angle of attack, so down or up when it's hitting, but I add loft as I go at zero, yeah. well the center of gravity now is going to line up with a lower part of the face. And if I'm taking loft off, swinging at zero angle of attack, the center of gravity is going to be higher than the face, it's going to be moving it up. It doesn't only move this way and this way, it moves this way and this way. Okay. So people saying, can you just basically hit some out the toe and test it? It doesn't work like that. I've tried it, I promise you. Another curveball, which we'll try and test for later, is when I know I'm going to hit it out of the toe. So I've done tests where I think, I'll do a video to explain what gear effect is. You hit it out the heel, it cuts. You hit it out the toe side of wherever this sweet spot moves to. It draws. When I know I'm going to do it, even when I apply the draw... Or, or the toey numbers at zero path, zero face, it doesn't draw. Yeah. It's spasmatic. I've got robot testing, testing a certain brand's face that shows things that work and don't work, which we'll do a video on at the right time, um, you, where you take the human out. What's interesting for me is sweet spot is dynamic, it's moving. You don't become a better player by knowing this, but it might make you a bit more educated in asking, hopefully, for if you should test for miss hits, because testing for miss hits is one part of about, well, you've got, you've, got to you've got to be able to control up and down what loft you've added or not, path both ways and face the path. So you've got to be able to control every dynamic to a degree. Mm. I could hit now a thousand shots and the chances of getting them all with the millimeter, millimeter to millimeter strike would be near on impossible. Mm. So when people say they're testing for miss hits, they are not. What they are doing is not understanding the dynamics of testing golf clubs. 
But interesting, isn't it? We track. I track the CG. Yeah, I know I've done that. Yeah, you said that. You said that. I can lot. do another yeah. test where I move the CG in the club by doing things with the shaft and putting certain weights on the shaft, and it made me hit the ball in very different places on the face when I did that. So, uh, so are you saying that I would track CG? Yeah, you would. You're, okay. You're, you're, you so feel it. I. What you're not a, swinging a face. Like I would. I know, sense. you're swinging a centre of gravity yeah. with a flat face. So mm. you swing it in that order. You swing the centre of gravity, which you can feel, mm. even if you can't articulate it, yeah. and then you try and align the flat bits of the club yeah. with that moving centre of gravity. Yeah. You don't hit it with the back side of the club. You know you've got to hit it with that bit, yeah. and you try and control that bit. Yeah. But you're very aware... Of where it's... Uh, and I, to be honest with you, I don't know many golfers who don't. Mm. As in, because most golfers will tell me if they've hit it off the toe or the heel. Yeah. yeah. But they won't deliver the same face to par from par every time. Yeah. Yet they are still go, that was a toe or heel. So the centre of gravity is dynamically moving. Yeah. And they're going hit one out the toe, one out the heel, and they can still define that they're catching the other side. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So yeah. by, by definition, they're, they're feeling the centre of gravity. That's all you're feeling. That is a good. Little game that's not a game. Game that's not a game. I like that. I I've learned done, something there. That's a little, little crossfield okay. school. Yeah, again, it? I would have done that with Matt, but we'd add a, I've got to go now because I've run out. I've got to take <laughs> school my run. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it'd still be there hitting, guys. I'm just going to rip one in a minute. I'll get one.